we agree that play can help learning outcomes. I think then the question is how much? And David, I'm going to ask you the first question. What does play have to do with learning? How does play connect to learning? Hopefully we all agree that play is great for creativity, for communication, for collaboration, building bridges between like the world of imagination that is in the mind of one child and the world of imagination, which is going to be somewhat different, of course, in another child. Playing together means that a kind of connection can be made. Uh, it's a human connection, but also it means they can learn together. They can feel empathy. Um, and I think play is also importantly about being able to tell your own story, about making your mark in the world, showing that you can create something which then becomes a thing that can be shared with other people, which is powerful. Skatistan, they're in Afghanistan, they say they come to skateboard, but then they stay to learn. And they manage to have this kind of fusion of skateboarding in a context where you've got 18% female literacy, they've got 40% girls taking part, and they're, they're both playing and learning together in what seems like a really clever fusion. Todos los niños. All children love to learn. It's in their nature. And if they can learn through play, even the better. And if they can learn playing and taking pleasure, even better. But they don't like to study. Children don't like to study. It's boring. Schools are for studying. Schools nowadays are not for learning. 80% of, of people consider schools are for one thing and play takes place in another space. Whereas we believe that everything has to be integrated and a school has to give place to learning but has to give space for playing as well. So kids should learn and play at the same time. They should enjoy learning. 30 years ago, we wonder ourselves if children were able to learn everything they need playing, that'd be great. Is that possible? Or school must provide a rigid framework, the only framework in which children can be educated. The other question was, could we ever have such a good school that teachers, principals, students want to go to school even on Saturdays and Sundays? I believe that schools should be an enjoyable place. I think one of the challenges they have is looks at frivolous, so it's not necessarily meaningful. Now, obviously everybody here doesn't believe that, so we already don't need to convince you that play is important. And we know the outcomes of play, which is critical. Uh, but it has to be measured. So I think we had some great examples this morning uh, in our plenary sessions, sh looking at ways to look at characteristics or higher executive power, uh, the higher executive thinkings, and and uh, basic life skills and measuring on that from play and then basically doing what the medicine's been done for years is doing randomized trials, measuring you know, with play and without play and then giving the examples of that. Now, sport measures on time, on heights and on, on those type of elements. So it's obviously a very different way of uh, measuring, but you can actually bring those knowledge and abilities to do measure uh, play itself and the and particularly the outcomes and the impact of play. Now, in our organization, we do that a lot, and obviously we go into communities and places where play is seen as incredible uh, luxury, uh, where they are affected by war and trauma, uh, where they are living in a high level of poverty, and of course there's a tremendous amount of demands on, on the child and it's, it, uh, its person's development, and where play actually comes in also as an if, in, uh, element of fun, of a normalization, and of so something was its most critical to a child, psychological development, that they're allowed to be ch children again. Why don't we play as we grow up? I, I think we all know that it's part of adult culture that you kind of move away from child culture. We feel this need to be serious, we need to appear professional. There's those kind of, which is, you know, sensible concerns. We all want to sort of appear well organized and we know what we're doing. We're shy about the idea of mucking about. Um, but as we also know in the world of business, well then, mucking about, as I just called it, essentially prototyping, trying things out, taking risks, doing something where you don't really know if it's going to work. Maybe you already know it's not going to work, but it's worth just sort of 
trying out a thing to see what kind of offshoots you might get from that idea. And the kind of stuff they do in corporate training where, again, it exists in this sort of separate little bubble where you can play for a while. We're going to have, like, play day. But then the rest of the time, we just go back to normal, sensible life. That's, that's obviously a huge shame. Um, I think we do do some. We should recognize the playful things we do do as adults, even though we don't call them play. A certain lightness, a certain, you know, jollity, I think, is good and can inspire children to also kind of know that play is good and play is done by serious people. Play isn't just done by clowns. Play is done by serious people who know that it's an important part of life. So, Johan, will you help us with the game, please? Yeah, I can, I can do a game, yeah. I mean, I think we had to stand up. Put the thumb in the other person's hand. There we go. There's a perfect example up here on the stage. And I do. So then... We do this. Can you actually? Can you manage to coordinate this? This is like a, an amazing coordination activity, by the way. So now you're learning interaction. You get a little bit of self-doubt, I'm sure. It's much more fun when you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's creativity because they they use the the ring behind you. And so when I say play, you pull your thumb up. So you try not to try to catch the other person's thumb with a flat hand. Can you show that just? There you go, yeah, and you try to catch it there, yeah. And then, so you had to try to catch it one place and, and drag it up the other one. Did you get that? It's exceptionally simple. A five-year-old gets this much quicker than all of you, okay? So now, I, when I say play, you pull We've up. We've been schooled. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Play! <laughs> all right, you gotta go back in, back in position. I'll go do it again. Play! Welcome. Before the game and after the game, I'm hoping that your opinions have, have, have shifted a little bit. I want to ask all of you, to, uh, three or four of you, please, at least, uh, to tell me, what is the biggest barrier? I think the biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle is that people go through life always trying to find a purpose for everything that they do, and play doesn't need a purpose. So, um, in a very functional society, you do things to achieve certain things, and play seems to be, you know, not leading you to anything. So, unless you can identify or you're playing with a purpose, why should you play? I think that's the major barrier. Yeah. In fact, from my point of view, where I sit, I see play as a journey of discovery in, in a way, and you, sometimes you don't know what you will discover. You have teachers teaching who may not have actually played in their education process. Here in Qatar, you have a lot of imported teachers as such from overseas who come from a very traditional background who are then being asked to use new techniques, innovative techniques, but they themselves have not been exposed to this at all. I'm involved in a lot of teacher professional development around the world, and very often the barrier is just the teacher's fear that by playing his dignity or her authority will be forever undermined, and he or she will never regain that and that the relationship with children will be broken. It's a very simple thing to remedy. You know, you just need to get them in a safe environment and green light to play. But until someone, usually they feel someone has to come in from outside to do that. But once you tell them the rules have changed, you know, they play wonderfully. In my opinion, as it's just been said, we need to have a different approach. The difference between teacher and educator is crucial. Teachers provide content, whereas educators help to learn. Teachers do not allow themselves to learn along with children. If they do so, they will create games and toys and that's what we try to do in our organization. Now, in order to do so, you have to move away from traditional beliefs. So classrooms should be managed in a different way. We should not consider classrooms as places where to provide very formal content during an hour, for instance. We have to reimagine how we use the classroom, how we use the space to uh, promote participation, to promote a different way of learning. So classrooms should be managed in a different way, to shift away from the traditional paradigm of education and learning. And the more time we allow for play, 
The better outcomes the school will reach, but that's not yet possible because schools fear to think outside the box. They think it's safer to remain in the box, and that's the first thing we have to change.